I was at the, my wife and I were at the, at the house, I think, and we were just, I believe we were just in front of the television, just, she was watching television, I was going back and forth, and all of a sudden it started happening, and we just were in shock, in watching LA, it, we we're in LA, we're in LA, and, um, um, I, I just was transfixed, and my wife never moved for 24 hours. She sat there for 24 hours in front of the television on the couch, just watching. And I, and I, I, I couldn't do it anymore. I had to go for a walk or do something. I had to just, um, you know, all of our friends and family there in New York. So it was uh, just the images of people walking around with ash on them. And, uh, looked like a nuclear holocaust. Well, I think, you know, people, you know, it didn't, nothing happened after, a couple of days after. We, we, I think we were off for a while uh, until they actually got the city um, safe enough. And um, uh, I don't remember a big, you know, speech. I don't remember a big discussion about, you know, this, we have a responsibility to, you know, I think, uh, um, we just went back to work um, and just thankful that all of us were here, everyone was here um, because it was, you just didn't know, you, you know, the images of people walking 25 miles home, you know, across bridges, you know, Jersey, Queens, Brooklyn, you know, Verrazano Bridge, and Staten Island, I mean, it was, it was uh, just, surreal. So I, I, I don't remember us doing a whole um, big thing to, <clears throat> uh, to announce what, you know, that we were, we were, um, we had a responsibility to, to, <clears throat> to do something for, you know, to provide some sort of, you know, uh, entertainment or some sort of guidance for people. Um, I think we were all just thankful to be, to see each other. My first day back in New York um, after 9/11, because of course I, my wife and I were in uh, in LA at the time. Um, I don't remember a um, you know the devastation of the city. I, you know I don't even remember it, depending on the flight pattern. And I'm sure the airlines were flying around that area. They weren't flying over it so people can go. You know it uh, it was uh, it was a tra it was traumatizing. Everyone was. Um, you know, when the, when the planes got back up in the air, and that took a while, um, it may have been a week or two weeks, I can't remember. And then but a couple of by Saturday, by the weekend. By the weekend. Um, so, uh, I mean, I think everyone, what I remember most of all is that there were no more silverware. It was all plastic. And no knives at all, I don't think. So, I, and that, that, that went on for, you know, for years. Um, and to this day, you you can you're hard pressed to find a. You know, I, I can take that back on first class flights. I've gotten very, very cold um, steel silverware, but it, for that that was the first thing that I, I remember. There was a lot of spoons. Sporks. Yeah. A lot of sporks. A lot of sporks. <laughs> Just a little nub <laughs> to to try to stab your salad. I, with the nose. <laughs> right. I don't, and and I remember the 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 airplane doors, the po co pilot cockpit doors. You, there were no more children going in there and you know hanging out and uh, locked. And then the you know of course the, when pilots come out, you know you can't come back. And I mean so, and um, the marshals on the planes and and uh, the armed force at the. Uh, check-ins and um, you know I, I you know we before 9/11 it was the honor system I remember and I'm from Detroit and I used to go uh, when I was a sophomore in college the summer of my sophomore year in college I worked at uh, the um, world headquarters for General Motors and on my lunch breaks I would go around to all of the, because I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I just went around, had a little pushing papers, 
uh, for a summer job. And I used to go around to all the major, you know, looked in the directory and saw where all the VPs were. And I just went around and, and set up lunches to see if I could ask them what they did. And I remember going up to the, I didn't ask anybody. I just got in the elevator, went up to the top floor, came out on the top floor and saw the window there, went out to the window and took pictures. And went back in the elevator and went back downstairs. I mean, those days are gone. And when you do find that you can still do it, it, you, it really is like, you guys have no security in this building? What's wrong here? Well, anybody can just walk in. But that was, that was you know, it's like uh, in certain neighborhoods, you can leave your front door open, the screen, you know, summer times, and people don't lock the doors. And there's no outside lights around the house at night. It's just pitch black when you drive up. Um, you know, we moved into an, an area that was kind of like that um, about three years ago. And when we moved in, the sheriff, you know, told us, he said, light your house. Light the outside of your house. The, yeah. the criminal element has discovered La Canada, where you guys are, and you need to protect yourself. So it's, you know, it's those days, 9-11 did something, I think, to us. And... And in a, in a really strange way, it, it, uh, it took off of the, took, I think, took the blinders off and uh, woke us up. Um, I know law and order in terms of, um, you know, there was no real speeches or anything like that on the show. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know, and Richard, I spoke to Richard Belzer, who's mm -hmm. on SVU at mm -hmm. the time. Do you recall a storyline that was supposed to be done, like a three-part crossover between all the Law and Order? There was one. It was a, I think it was, uh, I don't know if it was all three, but it was definitely two. It was a terrorist thing. Right. That, and they, that they canceled the plans for that. Can you? They, they, we did one. We, I don't know if it was a terrorist base, but we did something where it was a two-hour episode where two, as I said, at least two of the, um, two of the shows were involved. It may have been all three. Um, but I remember it was, uh, from a coordination standpoint, it was a nightmare. I mean, it's tough enough to shoot in, in Manhattan. But that, you know, everybody was on high alert. Uh, if you're shooting on a, you know, in, in and around uh, um, one of the major buildings, or if you want to shoot um, around one of the bridges, uh, it's, you, you know, the only... Um, the producers and the location people really know how very, very difficult, you know, those days. I mean, you know, it's it's like it eventually it has to relax. But that's what, you know, terrorists count on, that, that you know, two, it may take five, it may take ten years, but eventually they're going to relax again. And that's when we'll be, I mean, so that's, you know, that's what happened recently in, uh, I guess, where was it, Oslo? Oslo, Oslo. Yeah. So um, it's... You know, you, you count on people not being crazy. I, you know, people went right back to work. People, you know, I, New York, I lived there for about seven years. And I, I've, and whenever I, I think whenever I visited, I found more kindness there than I did in L.A. Um, I think New Yorkers, there's a reason that, that um, you know, Something like, you know, nine eleven. I mean, it could happen in any city, you know. Um, but the fact that it it took place in the, the city of New York or the city of dreams, and people, you know, New Yorkers rally. New Yorkers, you know, know how to bend but not break, and it it bent the city. It bowed the city, and we all saw it. And but it didn't break the city. It just brought everybody very, very close together. And it brought the, you know, the nation um, close together. And uh, in a way that, you know, made the, the, you know, made our resolve stronger, I think. It made the city of New York a, a stronger city. And the people, anytime you have to, you know, L.A. went through something similar when the earthquake happened, I believe in 94, or something that's that traumatic when, when you... You know, if you didn't know your neighbor before that, you would know your neighbor if something like this goes down. You know, people tease New Yorkers a lot, I think, 
you know, you're living right next door to somebody for 25, 30 years and don't even know who they are. You know, across the hall. Oh, wow. I've seen you. I've seen you before. <laughs> <laughs> I lived next door to you for the last 15 years. <laughs> Have we met before? Um, so, you know, it, it forces, I remember when the earthquake happened here, people were all out in the middle of the street. And, you know, I didn't know who my neighbors were. And it was like, wow. Everybody had on their pajamas, you know, and just <laughs> curlers in the hair. <laughs> it's just like, oh, and everybody's hugging. And, you know, when a big snowstorm happens in New York and, you know, everybody's skiing down Fifth Avenue, you know, and shaking hands. And I mean, it's those kind of, uh, you know, occurrences that make us all realize it's, it's little stuff. It's about connecting with people. Yes, the you know all of our technical, all of the we gotta move, 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 move. Gotta get there, gotta get there. I'm late, I'm late. Taxi. But it's, as soon as something happens and a little baby is, or someone's stuck up on, or the earthquake or the snow, everybody's. Are you okay? Are you? I just want to make sure you. I mean, it's. I think it's their reminders. It was. It, it was a supreme wake up call for the world, that, that people are crazy. People are absolutely crazy. It doesn't, you haven't, don't have to have done anything in the last 10, 15, 20, 30 years, but somebody has something in their mind. And it's very easy to be crazy and wreak havoc. And so we just, you know, we as a, as a nation, as a, as a, as a, certainly as a city of New York, but as a nation, we just have to rally. and put up with, I mean, I would rather put up with a little armed at the airports at present than to, you know, go back to being asleep and someone just walking in and, you know, but how can you, you're crazy. <laughs> you, know, you know, that that's, people you just take it for granted. 9-11, let everybody know, people are not well. <clears throat> I think, um, I mean, I remember prior to 9-11, when was We Are the World? We that was were, 83, I, I mean, that was, that was, I don't remember anything, you know, big like that. And maybe it's just because nothing big like 9-11. You know, I'm sure there were earthquakes and, but to the extent where people, the entertainment industry started to rally and set up, you know, um, you know, phone and, you know, people gathering and the entertainment, you know, and celebrities gathering to, we have to do something. And I mean, I, I, I was, I think more so than anything else, we were the tragedy, but then our response and the, you know, it was like 2000, you know, before 2000 happened, everyone was Y2K, you have to be ready. And it was, it was like that people were gathering and money was just, money was just flowing. You know, just to, you know, for, you know, we just hope and pray that it actually got to people. You know, there was a lot of money flowing to their, you know, various organizations. And, um, you know, I, you know, I can't think about that. I, you know, all nor any can any of us where we just want to, here's, you know, $10 and $5, you know, anything people, you know, just to think that, you know, families, you know, who had a husband or, you know, brothers and sisters and, who were working in the buildings and their, you know, families are wiped out. And uh, so I know everyone wanted to, to do something. We, we all felt that we should be, we should do something. We should, when a family has eight babies, everybody sends something, you know, diapers and food and toilet paper, wipes. I mean, people, you know, that's the feelings that we should do something. We should, say something we should what can you what do you need me to do anything can i okay i'll just be here just let me know you know it's that feeling which which again it it's it speaks to the humanity because everyone is always hustling and just worrying about all of a sudden when you see devastation and you you realize you have if not by the grace of God, I, I was on my way in that day, and I, I, the alarm clock broke, 
and I overslept. I mean, that's how many stories have we heard? I think the if the stories changed at it at all, it was they got. I think they got more intense. I think everybody's everybody realized all bets are off now. You know, if you can, if someone can can because everybody thinks crazy thoughts, but they thought a crazy thought, and they actually did it. I mean, the idea of using a plane as a as a, a a missile with people in it, coordinating. I mean, that's brilliantly evil. That that they crossed a line, and at at, at that point, the world changed. Every everything changed at that point. Nobody. You can't say to someone, "Well, you have to be." You know, when you see someone at the airport with screen, you know, people were like, "Well, why do we have to go all through this, all this screening?" And the plane is. You know, someone, uh, you know, the airport has been cleared out there. Somebody left the package there, you know, overnight. And they, I hear those kinds. I say, okay. I know I'm going to be late. I understand that. I understand. But everybody goes, okay. Take off your shoes. It's okay. I mean, you go to Europe. It's it's armed. You know, you know, you go through barricades. and dog, I mean, you don't see that here. But you, they, they try to protect us from... It being an armed, you know, camp. But if it turns into that, so be it.